Bay and welcome to another episode of Tech Adept Crafts. Today we are looking at the January Patreon issue for TAC. This amazing dice tower designed by Ian Lovecraft is an old piece from whom he has uh, reworked it for our Patreon uh, and it is, <laughs> it is beautiful. Dwarven Brewery with this massive keg on top which is actually your dice tower and you roll the dice down into the green room. If you'd like to download this file and print it yourself, jump on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash techadeptcrafts and join us over there and become one of the hobby goodness uh, followers or one of the full tackle and you'll be able to download this STL file. It is a, it's a beautiful print. How does it roll? Hmm, pretty cool. These barrels, uh, you can actually glue the lids down. I'm leaving it free so I can actually store a set of dice in there. Great. But the actual keg is where you... Whoops. Is where you roll the dice. No, not 20 this time, but a 19. Pretty close. I have had a bit of a habit at the moment, unfortunately just broke it, of rolling nat 20s when I film rolling a dice in a dice tower. Yeah, anyway, I'll have to film all of my attack rolls from now on in D&D. So this piece, really simple. I didn't want to do a, um, a dark wood barrel. I, I do a lot of dark woods uh, and I do a lot of light colored stone. So I thought this one, I'm gonna do something different. I've got light colored wood and dark stone. You check out the video and see what you think. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button. And leave a comment down the bottom as to which of the dice towers I have done recently you prefer or any other dice tower that you might like to see in the future. Give us some suggestions as to possibly some sci-fi uh, based dice towers if you think that would be a lot of fun. I can think of a couple at the moment which would be really cool to make and I might make it better go in, in this new year. Sit back, enjoy the show, and I'll see you briefly at the end. Cheers. First things first, a failure. I had my print bed slightly too high, so when I removed the keg from the plate, it tore part of it off. But rather than reprint the whole thing, I flipped it upside down and printed just the bottom two millimeters of the keg and stuck that onto the bottom. A lot easier. Sprayed it black, then with a white xenosol highlight over the top. I am now going to paint the stonework which I'm doing a mid gray, which I've added some dark blue, a little bit of purple, some black wash, but then also just some straight black, just to try and darken that stone. This goes over the stonework of the wall. using just a straight mid gray. Now you'll see there I'm using a dropper bottle for the water. I found that this is a lot better an option than continually dipping your paintbrush into a dirty water pot. For the kiln at the bottom of the keg I am using terracotta, this lovely color by Kaiser Color. Now a warning that this next part will trigger some people. If you've ever made a starboard, using a toothbrush is a fantastic way to flick the paint on. And using this lovely Kaiser Color Sea Breeze, I am flicking specks of that paint onto the dark stone wall. This is to give the feeling of various specks and things that might be in that stonework. At the end though, I, I do use the toothbrush like a stippling brush. I also use an actual brush to add some of the dark navy that I had before and some of that terracotta just to give a whole range of different colors that are showing through. To bring out the edges I'm using a light gray to highlight the edges of the stonework there. I was originally only going to do the top but in the end went around every brick. Oh well. <laughs> To paint the distillery part of the keg, I'm using this metallic silver by Lenny's Decorator Acrylics and I'm mixing it with some grey paint to try and make it a bit darker uh, and some of the black wash. Uh, it doesn't really give me the, the feeling that I wanted in the end so I, I did go over it a bit later but this was a good start. 
Then on to Liquitex Basic Acrylic Raw Sienna. And this is going to be my base color for all of the wood. I'm also using it as the base for the metal because my original plan for the metal rims of the barrels and the keg was to do them with the brass. I did change that later though and just made them straightforward metal. As I said earlier, you can actually get this STL file by joining us over on Patreon at patreon.com slash techadeptcrafts. And I'd like to thank the people at The Hobby Goodness who have done so. They, their support really is so, so meaningful. Their support also goes to Help Anala, which is an amazing organization. And we, we give generously to them every month and I really do love to be able to contribute to helping them. But I'd like to take a moment to particularly thank the people at The Full Tackle. The Tacklers join me each month for a live stream and they get the STL file and their support and the continued friendship they were building within that group is really quite special to me. I'd like to thank Andreas Rocco, Chad Harvey, David Bennett, David Scaberis, Ian and Tyga O'Connell, Jean McGuire, Joel Cunningham, Judy Hayes, Kent Rutherford, Christina B., La Piana, Mousetrap Creations, Night Lurker, Riri, Sean McKinley, Thomas Hernandez, and Toggers. Thank you guys, you really are legendary. For the green room door, I am using a Liquitex Basics Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, and it's a wonderful color to use. It's a really vibrant sort of forest green. It is slightly watery, so I do need to go over it twice. I also use this color for the emblem on the keg later. To highlight the wood, I'm using a blend of unbleached titanium by Liquitex Basics and the raw sienna that I was using before. This is being dry brushed over all the wood components and I'm then adding that unbleached titanium into the terracotta to dry brush over the kiln. straightforward light gray dry brush over the flooring and then I thought I'd add it as a little feature piece in the middle of the dark stone wall. To highlight the door and the emblem on the keg I am using this lovely yellow green color from Crafty Color gloss acrylic paint. I'm also adding then later a little bit more white to that highlight. First attempt on the metal bars, this is Balthazar Gold, a base color from Citadel. Uh, I start this off and then really think, nah, don't really like it on those bars, but I do put it on the central bar around the keg. I do think that would make a really nice feature with those, those Celtic knot works, and I, I wanted to keep that there. Take two, Game Color Gunmetal. This is a much better base. And it works really well with the black wash later to give a really dirty iron look. Time for washes. Black wash, this recipe comes from Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft and I'm putting this over all of the iron work. Continuing the washes, this is also from Jeremy. This is the brown wash and I'm using this over the woodwork and over the gold. Now, after applying this, I have realized that my brown is probably a little bit thin. So unfortunately after this project I have actually added some extra of the burnt umber ink. A 
simple dry brush back over the gold with the gold. A two-part process for the foam on top of that emblem. This is a white paint, then with a contrast apothecary white over the top of it to give some shading. For the lettering, I'm using Macrag Blue, which is a base from Citadel, and then just highlighting it up, adding white to it in successive layers. That's it for the painting. I do pin the lid down to the keg and stick it all together. The pin I use is a 3 mil piece of dowel and I just cut that to fit and put a little bit of that silver paint over the top of it to make it match with the rest of the ironwork. And that's it. The project is done. I now have a collection of dice towers that are a lot of fun to use and I really hope that you have enjoyed watching them. If you have a particular favorite of all of these dice towers, don't forget to leave me a comment on the bottom and say which one you like. Or if you really do not like the color of my green door, also let me know. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Until then, keep hobbying and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers guys. Thank you.